In this video I'm gonna beat Plants vs Zombies still using only Plants from PvZ1 Part 9 The Jurassic Marsh This time there will be 32 hardcore levels that I will struggle to beat That's gonna be the hardest world in our challenge If you haven't watched the previous 8 parts I highly recommend you do it Without further ado let's continue our challenge Enjoy Day 1 The Introduction I couldn't even imagine that the Jurassic Marsh would be the hardest world of that challenge. Everything began just as usual with pea shooters, but things started to go wrong right from the first level, on which we stuck with the fossil head zombie. That's kinda hard to destroy that dude using only pea shooters, but using it in a combo with torchwoods? That's another deal. I can't say that I was relaxed while beating it, and that's just the first level level. Day 2. Thanks PopCap for giving me a primal pea shooter, which I obviously can't use. Beating the Jurassic Marsh without the primal pea shooter is a huge pain. Believe me, I remembered that day pretty well, cause I lost a damn lawnmower on it. I didn't have any sense to stop the zombies. That world is sick. Day 3 was a typical conveyor belt level. I don't believe that it is beatable without the grape shot, especially after seeing those stupid dinosaurs on the loan. Man, I hate this mechanic, because they are unbeatable. For me, it's not about the hardness, it's just about annoying everyone around, even zombies. Day 4 That was a good level because I rented a snow pea, which was later substituted with a winter melon. If you have the option to use a snow pea, believe me, Jurassic Marsh is one of the best worlds for using that amazing plant. 9 winter melons, what a good result. Day 5 a bunch of repeaters destroyed the very first zombies on the lawn. The local imp is really fast, so he is the number one target to be destroyed. Here I still thought that the magnet shroom would be as useful as in the neon mixtape tour, but I was wrong. That dude is useful only in two worlds, and none of them are called the Jurassic Marsh. Since I go in pretty fast here, so my main goal while beating every single level is to freeze the time at least for a bit. Wintermelon is the best available option for that. Day 6. Nuts became useful again. He also helps me to win some time to gather some sun and plant all the sun shrooms. Man, I hate this damn local imp. Anyway, we did it. The loan was successfully cleared. Day 7 was an unusual conveyor belt level, with the additional goal of protecting the weird flowers. Ok, not from the very first attempt, but I still managed to complete it. Of course, it's unbeatable without the PVZ2 plants. Day 8. We have just reached the first wave and what do we have on the loan? Right, a single repeater. I won't lie, that was hard. The zombies had fully destroyed my defense and they had almost reached the end of the loan. But to my luck, I had enough sun to stop them. Well, at least I left with 3 lawnmowers. Not the worst end, I guess. Day 9. Survive the zombie attack with the given plants. That level was fully dedicated to the local plants, so let's just skip it. Day 10. So because of the flying dinosaur, I thought that Split P would be the best counter plant in that case. I was wrong. None of my plants could stop those hordes of zombies, so my goal was simple – to survive as long as possible and not let them reach the lawnmowers. Whoa! I have survived till the end and even left with a lawnmower. I guess that Crazy Dave is proud of me. Day 11. This world became so hard that I had to begin using potato mines. It gave me an amazing opportunity to prepare my defense against the first wave of zombies, which to my my surprise was stopped pretty easily. I didn't lose any lawnmower. What a success! Day 12. 
Oh no, that's not good. The primal gargantuar, the strongest gargantuar in PvZ2. Along with his appearance, we've got an amazing use. We can't lose more than 6 plants. On my very first attempt, I tried to beat it just as usual with repeaters and torchwoods, but it didn't work. On my second attempt, I created another strategy, using which I even managed to get to the final wave, but then this happened. Like, what the hell is that? Bro used the cheat code on a teleport. On the third attempt, I almost did it, but I forgot to launch the lawn mover, so I failed it again. Remember, timings are really important here. The fourth attempt was the final one. Here we had the correct positioning of plants, the appropriate use of plant foods, and many more key things that made this level possible to be beaten. Day 13. Yep, even more puff shrooms. Let me explain. So the dinosaurs kicked the zombies right at the beginning of the loan, and here I've got two options kill them or push them away. The second scene works amazing with the gargantuars. Thank god we didn't see them on that level. Previously I've seen enough of the primal gargantuar. Day 14. Survive the zombie attack with the given plants. The level which is fully dedicated to the local plants. Let's just… oh wait. They added iceberg latches to the plant list. What an amazing level and what a good decision. Anyway, let's just skip it. Day 15. I had to protect the rock. Sorry, the primal walnut. To my surprise, the level was so easy that I was even able not to collapse while beating it. I didn't lose any lawn mowers and managed to defeat the primal gargantuar at the end of the level. The aim to defend the primal walnuts was meaningless as none of the zombies reached them. But day 16. Oh man, I could just skip it because that level doesn't fit with my rules, but I wanna complain about it. What a stupid day. Just a meaningless zombie spamming all over the lawn. That level wasn't about difficulty, it was just about spamming zombies and plants. The Jurassic Marsh isn't about hardness, it's about absurd zombie spamming, which is combined with the annoying dinosaurs. I like the Neon Mixtape Tour for the unique mechanics with different music playing during the levels, but I didn't get the Jurassic Marsh wipe. Sorry, fans of that time adventure. But for me, that is the worst world in Plants vs Zombies 2. I'll make a separate video about it. Anyway, after 5 or 6 attempts, I was finally able to beat it. The first part of the Jurassic Marsh is successfully completed. Day 17. The levels are changed but my strategy doesn't. The same as usual, repeaters and winter melons are all that you need. Day 18. I've got only one question. Why the hell is the magnet room able to attract a piece of rock or cobblestone? I'm not complaining about it, just wanna be sure about the logic of that game. Day 19. What a great chance to use one of the most overpowered plants in the game, the cold snapdragon. When I was a kid, I liked that plant. Back then, one of my favorite plants in PvZ2 was Snapdragon, and imagine that PopCap created an even better version of Snapdragon. Sounds cool, but in reality, it's an overpowered plant that ruins all the hardness in the game. Day 20. The additional goal of producing 2000 sun looked kinda weird as for the level 20, but nevertheless, we managed to complete the level and save all the lawn mowers. Day 21. Well, at first I thought that I was done and I wouldn't stop that horde, but later I realized the tactic to stop them. The Tallnut is everything here. Potato mine, Tallnut and Cherry Bomb. The city needs to know its heroes. Day 22. Finally, my favorite type of level, the last stand. I had only 3000 suns, so I needed to use them in the right way. What can be better than than the minefield in the middle of the lawn. Only a lawn full of mines. 
my defense collapsed only after the final wave, so it was okay to lose some plants and loans. Day 23. It's a pretty interesting feeling when you understand that your goal isn't to build an amazing defense line, but only to survive to the final wave with all lawnmowers, or at least with 3 or 4 of them. In that case, everything began to collapse right after the final wave, so I was sure that the level was done. The funniest scene here is that the last zombie was killed by the dinosaur, who moved him away from my brain. Day 24. I tried to give a split pea a second chance. That was a huge mistake. The only plant here that can stop some zombies, at least for a bit, is torch wood. That's all. Day 25. A new dinosaur means new problems. Nice. My first attempt failed because all my sun shrooms were eaten right at the beginning of the level, and that caused the lack of sun after the final wave. On my second attempt, I planted all the sun shrooms on one lane, and that helped me to gather some sun to hold the defense at least a bit. That was the first level after which I left without any lawn mowers. Day 26. A new level means sticking with new problems. This time it was Dave Mold Colonies. It created a bunch of problems for me. The main one was killing the zombies. Only from the third attempt I have successfully completed it. Day 27. Yes, another last stand level. I wasn't so creative, so I decided to repeat the working strategy from the previous last stand level, and also they gave me the same amount of sun, so there was no reason not to repeat the amazing strategy from the past. Guess what? It worked, and I didn't even lose none of the lawn mowers. So who is the smartest one here? Jurassic Marsh. Day 28. I hate those damn imps. Someone, please destroy all of them forever. At that time I was really tired of playing the same strategy with the same plants, cause that world can't afford me anything else. Almost every level can be marked here with just one phrase. Somehow survived the zombie attack. Was every single level made in that way? That isn't funny at all. Day 29. Survived the zombie attack with the given primal plants. Do I need to say something about it? I don't think so. They study. The end of that world is coming closer and closer. Another four waves, but this time I was even able to hold the loan, not in the way of the partisan war in Vietnam. No, that looked like a normal fight. Even Primal Gargantuar couldn't resist dying because of that. Day 31. Another level which I had to beat using the given plans. Skip. Just skip. Day 32. Finally, fight with the Dr. Zambas. I can't tell that it was the hardest fight, but I didn't beat him from the very first attempt. While beating that level, I wanna share some thoughts about the Jurassic Marsh. That's a great example of how the world shouldn't be built. This time adventure doesn't teach you anything. The only lesson that it can give you is to always concentrate on the loan, because lots of things can happen just in a few seconds. Well, the Zambas is defeated and the key is mine, which means that we are moving to a new world that will teach us lots of good stuff. Yes, I'm talking about the big wave beach. This time it's gonna be 32 amazing and hard levels, which in most cases are made in the right way. That's gonna be the most interesting time adventure of this challenge.